Now let's see the etiological factors of dental caries and you have to remember that caries is never a single factor disease. It is a multifactorial disease. It means more than one factors should interact then only it forms the dental caries as an end result. So for that we need a susceptible host isn't it? If in, even if you eat uh, if you're edentulous and if you eat it doesn't mean you get a caries because there is no teeth. So the susceptible host tissue should be present. Then you need microflora with cariogenic potential. You need a microorganisms for that and also a suitable local substrate like carbohydrate or like starch or whatever food like sweet food you need. So these three factors are the basic, uh, the interaction between these three causes the dental caries. Yeah, uh, besides the three factors, now a fourth factor is also being added that is the time. That is the time of contact or time of exposure is also very important. And this concept was shown in the keys tri diagram. Okay, we can see as keys triad, you can see it as. Now, the factors that which we need are, let's see. The first one is a host should be present and diet also like sweet food. So, these two interactions have been done now. Next is the microorganisms. Now, in the presence of time, that is the time of exposure, we have this is the common interaction where all takes place and that forms the dental caries. And this is called as the case triad of dental caries. Now, let's move on to each of the factors. The first one is the susceptible host tissue. So, susceptible host tissue, there is tooth in we need to look the morphological characters of tooth as well as the position of the tooth. And in the uh, other one in saliva, other one is saliva in that we need to know the composition of saliva, pH quantity, viscosity, antibacterial factors. All these will influence the dental caries actually. Let's see how one by one. First one is the morphological characters of the tooth. In that, you can see the predisposing factor is the presence of deep, narrow occlusal fissures. You can see here like the molars are mainly affected, isn't it? Deep fissures or the buccal, the buccal pits or the lingual pits, these all affect. Also, not only that, if there is any disturbance in tooth formation during the development, like amelogenesis, imperfecta, dentinogenesis, imperfecta, these all can affect the uh, morphology of the tooth as well as Fix the morphology, the, those disturbances in formation and not only that, that can predispose to dental caries. Now the next one in tooth was the tooth position. Now if the teeth are malaligned or rotated or out of position, what happens? We, it won't be easy for us to clean. What happens as a result? There will be food accumulation and debris accumulation. So in such patients, what ha uh, the result will be they are more prone to caries. We have saliva. In saliva, uh, you know what is the major function of saliva. The major function of saliva is basically to flush out all the microorganisms or the food debris that is present in the mouth. So you need to know what is the normal quantity of saliva. Normally, the, it is uh, per day it is 700 to 800 milliliter. Now there are people who have uh, xerostomia or a dry mouth or aplasia means there is absence of salivary gland and in such cases what happens the salivary flow will be reduced obviously and that can even uh, trigger dental caries even viscosity of saliva is a matter because if the mu it is if the saliva is very thick and mucinous it can lead to dental caries so all ropey saliva thick ropey saliva that is also when the viscosity is very high so it can cause dental caries now salivary pH. Basically salivary pH is uh, determined by the bike always the pH is determined by the bicarbonate concentration. So in saliva it is determined by the bicarbonate concentration. Also when the salivary, salivary pH will increase with the flow rate. Okay and also we know that saliva act as a buffer. It means it can increase the pH of saliva in the oral cavity that is by how they act as a buffer. Then uh, there is a protein or there is an organic peptide that is the sialin. Sialin is present in saliva and that also helps in regulating the pH of saliva. Now you have to always remember that it's not that uh, for dental caries to happen, the entire mouth is acidic. Okay, but the acid is produced 
in the tooth which is prone to dental caries okay now if i'm taking if it is in my okay, if you're taking in a mouth it means the if molar is susceptible to dental caries means the acid production will be happening on the molar's occlusal surface or wherever it, there is microorganisms acting that point there will be a production of acids by the microorganisms it's not in the entire mouth it is in a significant in the case so acid production is very significant and it occurs in a localized site on the tooth not in the entire mouth now even saliva has antibacterial properties also these are very familiar to you those are the uh, lactoperoxides you know how to they kill microorganisms peroxides basically peroxidases they kill by catalyzing the hydrogen peroxide isn't it they are very powerful agents oxidizing agents and that is the action of lactoperoxidase catalyzing by peroxide mediated oxidation then we have the lysozymes lysozymes what do they do they will degrade the microbial cell walls by killing or by destroying the negatively charged peptidoglycan which is present on the microbial cell walls then we have lactoferrin it will bind with the iron which is found in saliva and iga it is a predominant uh, antibody that is present in our saliva so these are the antibacterial uh, these are the agents which give antibacterial properties to saliva okay that those were the susceptible host tissues now we have the second factor that is a microflora with a cariogenic potential so we need to know that a single microorganism is basically enough to induce caries okay a single type is enough now it doesn't mean that if you see an acidogenic microorganism it doesn't mean that it causes caries they should have a cariogenic potential have cariogenic potential even if it is an acidogenic organism it doesn't mean they can cause caries so the ability to produce acid for caries induction is that then it does not mean that all acidogenic organisms are cariogenic now the main uh, one which causes this caries is the streptococcus strains they are the most culprits for dental caries actually they are because the reason is that they can uh, they can synthesize the extracellular dextrans that is the reason why they cause basic more common they are very good in causing dental caries next is the role of dental plaque so what do you mean by dental plaque actually actually dental plaque it forms it behaves like a home for the microorganisms or the bacteria and it helps to for uh, the bacteria to colonize and also to adhere onto the tooth surface now imagine a tooth there is a tooth with pit and fissures okay there are many fissures and there are many deep cave, like uh, grooves present on that now the bacteria sits on it there are many uh, substrates like uh, sugary food or something which is left over bacteria starts to produce acids on it and this pellicle it will cover this bacteria and as such the tooth now there is a protective covering now there is acid production on that particular spot but saliva is not able to see this acid and neutralize it and thereby there will be decalcification demineralization dissolution whatever you can see there will be on that tooth and that tooth will eventually go for a dental caries so that is the main role for dental plaque it act as a home for bacteria or home for microorganisms okay now even uh, the main important three groups which causes dental caries are the streptococci actinomyces and the valinella groups now properties of cariogenic plaque um, you can see that the rate of sucrose consumption is noticeably higher in cariogenic plaques non cariogenic plaques do not take much of sucrose but cariogenic plaques will utilize more sucrose also bacteria in cariogenic plaques they will synthesize more of this intracellular glycogen amylopectin type of polysaccharides it is very important that you memorize this intracellular glycogen amylopectin type of polysaccharides now let's see more about it okay now if you consume sucrose whatever type of food it is a carbohydrate rich food if you consume about 20% of the sucrose within 15 minutes is converted into intracellular polysaccharides by the cariogenic plaque and now not only that 
this intracellular polysaccharides they are converted into lactic acid you know lactic acid production if it increases it means it is there is high susceptibility rate for caries let's see what are the debates basic difference between karyogenic and non karyogenic plaque now higher levels of streptococcus mutants will be present in karyogenic plaque and high concentration of lactic acid whereas streptococcus mutants level will be lower in non karyogenic plaque but they have higher level of s sanguis and actinomyces and also they have higher proportions of dextrinase producing organisms they have higher levels of valinella organism but lower concentration of lactic acid is present this is the basic difference between a karyogenic and non karyogenic plaque so we finish off with three two factors and now we come to the third factor that is the suitable local substrate okay uh, so now if we see diet and nutrition is very important okay well, the reason is because we know the early man they used to have many roughage type of food like very harsh and coarse type of food but now in our generation we get all processed foods which are thin or canned foods which are very soft we don't even need teeth to have those food because they are very soft but the early men when they used to have this rough coarse type of food there was a mechanical cleaning that is taking place by the food itself on the teeth surface but now it is very less so that is a, a big reason why now we have more caries prone now our generations are more caries prone now let's see what is the definition of diet and nutrition now diet means it is defined as the type and amount of food eaten daily by an individual okay it is the type and the amount of food whereas nutrition means it is a sum of the processes by which an individual takes in and utilizes the food so diet means like protein carbohydrate vitamin minerals all those like the amount and also how much you eat it is basically what is diet but nutrition means how our body utilizes it and this some process how we take in the food that is the difference between diet and the nutrition now let's see the physical properties of food and its karyogenicity now see physical properties of food that we have said that uh, it will improve the cleansing action and thereby it will reduce the retention of food isn't it and also it will increase the salivary flow thereby we can prevent caries we just said before now physical nature of like diet means the same thing mastication it will reduce the number of culture when you masticate it will reduce the microorganisms which are very karyogenic and also the cleansing action will also have some control in caries we can control to some extent now let's see the vitamin content of a diet and how this vitamins influence the dental caries or influence in dental caries means in a positive or negative let's see so the first one is vitamin a if there is a deficiency of vitamin a during your early developing time like in your early time when you are very young it will affect the developing teeth so if it affects the developing teeth you know what are the diseases there are many developmental disorders of teeth isn't it so if there is a developmental disease it means the enamel matrix is not so strong if enamel matrix is not so strong what will be the cause it can it is very prone to dental caries next we have vitamin k it is said to be anti caries agent so it is good to have vitamin k in your daily routine it is present on these like green uh, spinaches broccoli cabbages all those stuff then we have vitamin b it is also very necessary for the development of teeth then we have vitamin b it is good for the growth of non karyogenic organisms so if it if non karyogenic organisms are more it can suppress the karyogenic organisms okay thereby we can reduce the dental caries incidence next we have calcium and phosphorus now this also affects the disturbance if it is less it will affect the development of the tooth you can it can cause severe enamel hypoplasia that is also the enamel is very weak and you can have more prone to dental caries that is a vitamin content about how vitamin is related with our dental caries